Hi guys, welcome back to another video in this channel. So, um, new light setup. I, I, I hate this about myself. It's one of those things that I really, really hate. But whenever I'm doing something, especially when I'm producing something such as this, uh, like videos, I always like things to be like the best possible way that I can with the setup that I have. So I've been playing around with where the microphone is. I've been playing around with lights. Like if you were to see my lightsaber right now, it's ridiculous. I've been doing something we call Mexicanadas, which is when, when you just like do whatever you need to do to make things work. Like one, one of my secret weapons right now is single ply toilet paper because I've been using this to diffuse the light on some of my main lights to, to try to create like a nice effect. So I would really appreciate it if you let me know if this looks good or not, because if it's too dark or if it's too light or if it's too contrasty, I, I want to know so that I can improve it and, and, and have like a, like a really nice to it. I think it's a little bit too dark. I think this video is a little bit too dark. Like I can see it here on the, on the background, uh, but we'll play. We'll play around with the lights and see where we go. And while we're praying with the lights and, and doing uh, a lot of cool stuff, uh, of course, I'm going to be teaching you more 3D. So today I want to show you uh, something really interesting. Um, during the weekend, I was not uh, here. I went to see my in-laws. And um, there's a really nice place that I like, which is called Hobby Quest, where you can go and buy board games. So unfortunately, I did not have enough money to buy the games that I wanted uh, right now. But I saw this game and it really caught my attention. It's called Azul and uh, it's about uh, making like tiles. So... I really don't know how it plays, but it looked very pretty. And I went online and searched for some references, and it seems like it's a really like famous game. So if you like to play board games, you probably played this one before, right? So one thing that caught my attention, though, was the fact that they had this very nice, pretty mosaics pretty much everywhere. And I thought, hmm, wouldn't it be cool if I show uh, everyone how to do like a tileable material with like mosaics? And uh, yeah, I think that would be pretty cool. So let's do it. Let's let's do a mosaic tiled uh, material. So there's different approaches on how to do it, right? And our, I think the, the best approach that we can do right now is to do a single tile and then tile it multiple times. And then if we want to add more detail, we can change it later. Of course, you can do this with like marbles design, marble center, <laughs> sorry. Uh, of course, you can do this with uh, Substance Designer um, and create your own like like stuff. But I'm going to show you a very simple way um, that anyone's going to be able to create a nice like tileable uh, segment here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create, of course, the mosaic. So let's say and let's keep this like real in real size. Let's say this mosaic is 30 by 30. So it's going to be 30 centimeters by 30 centimeters uh, across the whole thing. Of course, it's not going to be like 30 centimeters thick. Let's say what, like two centimeters on the on the Z axis or the Y axis. So it's like two centimeters. I think that's a that's a good number. Now I'm going to grab the edges here. Or actually, I'm going to delete the face right here, the bottom face. And I'm going to grab all of the edges except for the bottom ones. There we go. And we're going to bevel. We're going to do two segments. And we can play around with the fraction. I want to have like a soft, um, like a soft effect. So something like this works perfectly fine. And this is where you would need to decide whether or not you want this to be, um, what's the word, for games or for less cinematics. I'm, I'm going for cinematics. So this is going to be like a model. Each tile is going to be modeled, right? So this is my tile. Of course, I'm going to say mesh smooth to give it a little bit more smoothness, uh, have like a like a nicer effect. And eventually we're going to do, of course, our number three, which is our smooth mode to uh, make sure that this works very, very nicely. Now, I was looking at uh, some behind the scenes. Um, I, I saw some behind the scenes from Shang-Chi, uh, the Marvel movie that released uh, last uh, season. And um, I saw a shot that blew my mind. So in, in Shang-Chi, I'm, hopefully I'm not going to spoil anything for, for you guys, but there's a scene uh, where there are some bam bamboo scaffoldings and there's something going on on the bamboo scaffoldings uh, right here. So yeah, this doesn't really spoil much. Um, of course, most of the bamboos like here, they were actually there and they uh, recorded like the, the whatever sequence happened there. But then they saw the making of like the BFX of the, of the things. And of course, they had to rebuild a lot of the scaffolding because they were not going to build the whole thing. And I saw the density that the bamboos had. There's a very brief shot on the on the reel that shows like how dense these guys were. It was ridiculous, guys. Each bamboo was probably like 50k triangles. Each bamboo. So I would guess there were like billions of polygons over there. And one of the reasons that happens, and I actually want to touch about this, uh, or I want to talk uh, want to talk about this on, on this one, it's due to texture distortion. So let me show you. If we were to do like a traditional, just like planar mapping from Y axis apply, just to create like a nice little effect right here, which is exactly what we're going to do, by the way, 
and we um, unfold this, control U, and then control L to um, like get it in there. This is what we're gonna get, right? And it looks okay. And we can even like whoop, go back to the UV editor. Here we go. And we can turn on our little like checkboard pattern. However, when I press number three, which is our smooth mode, you're gonna see that there's gonna be a little bit of distortion on the edges, see that? So, so that's what we want to avoid, right? Because I mean, in this case, it really doesn't matter as much because as you can see the, the most distortion that we get is down here, but it happens and uh, it could be annoying because you might be thinking that your texture is gonna look fine, but when you smooth, blip, you get this like weird effect and it probably has happened to you whenever you have model like a cylinder, for instance, let's say something like this. And then you insert like a couple of edge loops on the, like on the top and on the bottom. And then on the corners, you can see that that right there, on the corners, you get this sort of like weird distortion, right? Like you can see it here as well. On the seams, usually happens on the seams. So there is no like specific way to avoid it. It's gonna be dependent of each object. But one of the easiest way is to add a support edge. So for instance, if I add a support edge right here on the very bottom, now when I smooth, as you're gonna see, the distortion is only gonna happen on that like last section, right? So so the closer that like section line is to the to the bottom, and the less like distance there is in between the polygons, the less distortion we're gonna see, the, the more hidden it's gonna be. So in this case, as you can see, I added a couple of uh, elements right there to, to get a nice effect. And uh, yeah, there we go. So, so this is my, my little uh, mosaic tile. So again, we're gonna keep this really, really simple. So I, I don't wanna like overdo it right now. I'm just gonna grab this guy, say file, export selection. Let's go to our assets folder. Let's create a new folder, call this mosaic hit open and we're gonna do a mosaic, uh, mosaic, just mosaic. And we're gonna say uh, substance painter, of course. Now, what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna paint one mosaic and then if we want, we can create like a couple of variations for the textures so we can have like a couple of different ones. Maybe one has a couple of extra scratches, maybe another one has some cracks or something. Um, but yeah, you can create as many variations as, as you want and then like assemble your own like new uh, tile, right? So here I'm gonna say new, uh, 2K should be more than enough. Usually, you know, we go for like 4K and stuff. But in this case, uh, I think 2K is gonna be perfectly fine. Let's go to our our element here, mosaic, there we go, and grab this one. Now here, instead of uh, Substance Painter, there's just a one very simple tool that we're gonna be using. We're of course gonna use a texture bake, uh, just in case we need any sort of like maps. There's no like normal, there's no like high poly, low poly, but sometimes just having like thickness or something might be might be useful. And let's start building our, our, our stuff. So I think I'm gonna go for like a concrete, uh, concrete clean or concrete this one just gonna give it a little bit of uh, texture, but I wanna get rid of the uh, height information. So it's gonna be like flat. That way we, we do get the information, but it's not really affecting. And I'm actually also gonna delete or get rid of the roughness. That way we're only using the color and the metalness, which we can actually delete the metalness. We only need the color. Now I'm gonna add a fill layer and it's gonna be called my, let's, I'm gonna call it like a lacquer. I'm not sure if that's the proper word, but I'm not gonna use color or I might use color actually, but I'm gonna like soften this color up so like a really, really soft color, there we go. So we get like a whiter white. And I'm actually gonna go for like a sort of like cream color, like beige. There we go. You can even try like a different blending mode. I think just normal opacity works fine. And here, this is the important one, I'm actually gonna play around a little bit with the roughness. So I'm gonna bring the roughness down because I want this, I want this mosaic to be really, really shiny. So you can see how the light shines right here. I'm pressing uh, shift and right click to move this around, let me let me turn this thing on before we continue. There we go. So shift, right click, and I'm moving this thing around to, to see how this thing like flows around the object, right? Um, now let's paint the pattern. And uh, I think I'm gonna take inspiration from, from the one that we're using here. So I like this sort of like blue squiggly line thingy, this one right here with like a cross. Um, and here's where things are gonna get a little bit tricky. And the reason they're gonna get tricky is because unfortunately inside of a marmoset, we do not have a symmetry like we do in Sivers. You can turn on, I think, X and Y symmetry, but I don't think we do have radial symmetry. Let's give it a go though. So I'm gonna go here, this is gonna be a color and it's probably gonna be just like a blue color. So like a, like a dark blue, there we go. And I'm just gonna right click, add black mask and on the black mask, here's where we're gonna paint, right? The pattern. Now we can turn this button on, which is the, the symmetry and then here we have the symmetry options. And yes, we do have radial symmetry. Okay, so that's fine. So we're gonna do radial symmetry and let's do four points. Is that gonna work? 
yeah, it's, it's not really working. As you can see, we do get like a symmetry on on this side, but the other plane is not working. Let's see if we can change that. We want this mirror Y symmetry. There we go. That's what we're going for. Perfect. So yeah. So even though we we don't have uh, what's the word mirror symmetry on 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 X, like we can have X and C at the same time. Like even if we go to go like mirror symmetry, we can't have two like planes turn on. What we can do to radial symmetry, go to Y axis, which is going again from from top to bottom, and say, hey, we want this uh, for four points, right? So the angle span, let's change this to 360 so that we complete this thing. And there we go. Now, the only tricky part is that instead of like drawing the cross, I'm going to have to do something interesting right here. Now, actually, let's go. Let's go for an easier one, because this one might take a little bit longer. Uh, if you wanted to do the other one, oh, black mask. One thing that I would recommend, though, is using lazy mouse, which is uh, this one right here. So this little option is called lazy mouse, and it will give you like a sometimes like an easy to control uh, pattern. But in this case, I, I, I might use, um, I don't know, let's just just like, or let's do some like symmetrical things right here. So we're gonna go, let's say from here, all the way to here, and then here, and then here, and then here. So creating this sort of like diamond shapes, there we go. And then we can fill this in. And again, this is one of the cool things about doing, um, what's the word, a symmetry, right? Or radial symmetry that you only need to do one and it will do all of the other effects for you. So that looks nice. You can even press X and delete certain areas if you want to like polish certain shapes. And then let's try to do the next one. So it's gonna be, oh, let's do X again. It's gonna be from here to here to here. Uh, is it to here and to here? I mean, it's not exactly the one that we were going for, <laughs> but doesn't look half bad, right? Now, let's try and find the one that we want. So it's something like this. Okay, let me go back. This is where, where ZBrush would be really, really cool to, to do like a poly paint. So let's first find the, the points, right? So. So the points are gonna be like there and there. Oh. But let's create like a little line to create the points. There we go. So so those should be the points. Like we should be making pretty much like a like a perfect box technically. Okay, there we go. So we have the perfect box right there. Now let me just delete this guys right here. So I press Control and Shift to, to do the snapping, and we're gonna use that box as a as a reference point. Because from this box, as you can see, like we look at that little box right there, like kind of like at halfway points. So so right there and there. Like those would be the points where we get this things. So like from here, I know we're gonna go like up and then in and then up no wait it's up and then up and then down down no <laughs> sorry guys sorry I, I didn't rehearse this one so let's start on the on the center instead so let's start drawing there we go so it's up yeah that's the up line there we go let's do the other one okay let's click i'm gonna click and then shift click there we go up okay that's better good <laughs> sorry there we go so that one that one goes there and then from here we go up like this and we should follow a very similar like inclination from this point right about there and then from here down there we go and then we're gonna do something similar on this side so from here we're gonna go there and then from here we follow a very similar line and then from here there we go that's a lot closer to what we to what we're going for let's just of course 
uh, patch it up a little bit so so it matches as closely as possible. Nice. Uh, now I'm gonna press uh, spacebar and let's delete the points that we don't need. So all of this. You can do this with several clicks so that you have like your control C available. And all of this like little like elements. Let's close them, clean them up. There we go. Whew, that took quite about a while, right? But now uh, we have this and it should be, um, it should be fairly easy to just like fill this in, right? I am gonna go to my brushes and I'm gonna select a hard brush, the basic card, so that it's a little bit easier. Might have been a good idea to select this one from the very beginning. There we go. I'm using mouse, by the way. You can use your Wacom tablet if you want. I'm gonna make the size smaller, not that small. There we go. And we just fill all of this area. And again, to move a little bit faster, we can just go there. Cool. Now let's do a couple of like details. I'm not gonna follow this one anymore. So let's do like a little point there and a little point like right there. It's also gonna distract a little bit from the from the effect. There we go. That looks interesting. There we go. And then this one does have like a couple of like details here in the corners. I think it's like a good idea. So let's let's do that. And I'm gonna invert this. Let's get like a like a little triangle right there. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. These mosaics are usually done by hand. I mean, there are some machines, of course, that do them. Uh, but yeah, that looks okay. So now, of course, this color looks um, like just overlaid, right? And that's not something that we want. I'm gonna go to overlay, and that way the color is gonna be uh, like imprinted into the effect. Now, as you can see, we have a really soft line here and a really hard line here, and that's not something that we might want. So I'm gonna go here to my options. I'm gonna add a filter, and we're gonna use a sharpen filter. That way, the the lines that we had are, are should be a little bit tighter now. We can sharpen this thing up. And it should give me like a slightly better, better effect. Let's just fill in the little lines that we're still missing. And there we go. We have a nice little effect right here. Now, here's where, where the fun begins. As you can see, we have a very like perfect glow. And, and that's not something that you're usually gonna get, right? Like usually when you have something that's been used for a while, you're gonna get slight variations on the, on the shine and stuff. Uh, and to do that, I'm actually gonna go to my materials and I'm gonna go to something like the concrete bear which is, as you can see here, especially if I switch the, with the C channel and I go to the roughness channel, which is this one right here, you can see it has a very nice variation on the roughness. So what I can say is I can say, hey, I only wanna use the roughness information of the object. And that way we only get this. We can even turn on the height information to get like a little bit of, uh, of like bumpiness on the normal and it's gonna look quite fine. The only problem is it's a really weird and extreme change, right? Well, here's one of the beauties about uh, Substance Painter. You can go into the roughness channel and lower how much you want that roughness to influence the object. So now, as you can see, we're gonna get a more and more like nicely and evenly distributed thing. We can also go to the height channel and do the same thing. Like say, hey, you know what? Like I do wanna have a little bit of like, like height, but just like a very, very simple height. And now when we see the light on this thing, it's gonna look quite, quite nice like that. Uh, for cracks, we can add cracks. It's gonna look a little bit weird, but maybe when we do this on the on Maya, when we bring this back into Maya, it's not gonna look as bad. One thing I do wanna do is we can add, for instance, here another generator and do like a dirt generator and then multiply this and it will multiply against the mask. And that way there's gonna be like slight imperfections on the, on the mosaic paint as well. Uh, so it's not gonna be like perfectly even, and that's also gonna add a little bit of that extra, extra little detail that's gonna make the whole thing looks uh, look way way nicer. So let's add the cracks, and for the cracks, I am gonna go to the base color. I'm gonna add a new uh, fill layer. Um, I'm probably gonna use a little bit of like a dark, a dark color on the on the cracks. It's probably gonna be a little bit rough. And I'm gonna add a black mask, and I'm gonna add a fill layer. So fill layer. And here there's one that's called um, Cracks. <laughs> that's that's the name of it. It's this uh, Grunge uh, Cracked. There we go. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's working. So now it's only a matter of uh, the height. We're also gonna push like, the height down. And this is gonna like push the heights uh, down. The only thing we need to do is, is flip this. So sometimes they do have like an invert option. There we go, invert, there we go. 
So now it's kind of like adding this cracked effect to the whole thing, which looks quite, quite nice. And again, we can like play with this a little bit. So for instance, the normal map, let's let's lower this. And I'm also going to go to the hide map and I'm going to really, really lower the details. So yes, we are going to have a couple of like cracked effect, but it's not going to be everywhere. And there's going to be a very nice change in, in, in the in the in the values right here. I'm actually going to bring this thing even lower. No, that's not a high. Uh, let's go to the roughness and the concrete roughness. Let's bring it lower. There we go. So that the cracks are the ones that give me the most like change on the on the roughness, right? And uh, that's it. This is my my mosaic. So now let's uh, create a nice little floor on Maya. So I'm going to say file, export textures. Uh, let's export them, of course, into our project. You usually want to have your things on the project itself. So we're going to go all the way to next to live assets. Uh, mosaic and we're gonna go there the output template is gonna be Arnold AI standard which is our basic render and we're just gonna hit export 2k it's, it's perfectly fine there we go um, yeah now if we open the output directory you can see them here we actually don't need the height map right now I'm not gonna do this placement so we're just gonna need the base you can see the metalness is black so no need for the metal either we should be good with just base color normal and roughness those should be more than enough uh, let's go now to Maya real quick there we go and here, I'm just going to say right click. Uh, we can actually do this manually or with the Substance plugin. I've talked about this plugin before, so I'm just gonna I'm not going to go over it like quite a zip. Just remember to turn it on on your plugin manager. And if you go here into Substance, you can have this one, which is called uh, Apply Workflow to Maps. We select Arnold. We select multiple maps. We select the Mosaic maps. It should automatically like know that each one is which one is which one. If no, you you might need to like uh, manually plug them in. But as you can see, it works perfectly fine right here. Just hit Apply. And that's going to create a new AI standard material. So right here. So I just applied that one here. And you're going to see that we have the color. And all of them, like the maps and everything, are have the proper like uh, like linear color or raw color, whatever you need, so that they uh, work nicely. Now, here's another fun part. We can create our little mosaic. So I'm going to go here. And I'm just going to press Shift-D, 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 Shift-D. And then grab all of these ones right here. Move them over here, and again, shift D, shift D, shift D, shift D, to create a nice little like effect. Probably gonna go for something like this to to see like a nice little tile. And of course, we wanna have a little bit of variation. Now, we could use the random rotate. We've talked about bonus tools. I'm just gonna do a very quick one. So I'm gonna press E, which is the rotation key, and I'm gonna click. I'm gonna change this to discrete rotate. So now, when we rotate, we rotate in scales, right? So we we can rotate in in, in increments. And you can actually go into your um, uh, element here and the absolute step snap, I'm going to change this to 90 degrees. So now it's going to rotate in 90 degree angles. Okay. Now, why is that important? Because now what I can do is I can just like randomly select like several of these guys and then rotate once to one side and then randomly select like other little elements and rotate them to the other side and then randomly so like another like set of this guys, rotate them to the other side, and then again randomly, just like doesn't really matter which ones you grab. And even though they're tileable because they, they all share the same texture, there's gonna be slight variations, especially like the little points and stuff that are gonna give us a nice effect. Now I do wanna have like a little bit of like play on which ones are a little bit higher or lower. So I am gonna use the bonus tools. We do have a video about bonus tools, I think a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna go like too uh, in depth on this one. Let's select everything, freeze transformations first, grab everything, and I'm gonna just evaluate how high or low I wanna move them. So it's probably gonna be a variation of 0.4 and, and, and negative 0.4. So I'm gonna grab everything here. I'm gonna go into bonus tools, and there's a bonus tool that's really cool, which is called Modify Randomize Transforms Basics, this one right here. And on the move tool, I'm gonna go from minus 0.4 to 0.4, and it's gonna be random move on the Y axis only. So it's gonna be up and down only. I'm gonna hit random move. And now you can see that every single piece moved from 0.4 to negative 0.4. You can do it again. Of course, the more you do it, or sorry, <laughs> that was rotation. The more you do it, the more like change there's gonna be. So there's probably gonna be a point where things are just like flying. Uh, but if you do it just like a couple of times, you should get like a very, very cool effect where, where there's a couple of them that are a, a little bit like, like higher up than others. Let me create a plane here so that we don't get any like shadowing from the from the bottom part. Let's push this down so that the lowest ones are like not on the on the take. And let's find a nice little take right here. So something like this I think looks cool. I don't want to see the floor, so 
as many as this as we can see, but without actually seeing the floor, something like that looks good. Let's do Arnold lights, Sky Dome light, which is our, our basic like HDR that we, we normally use. We're gonna plug in an image into this uh, HDR. And I have this uh, urban courtyard. Mm, it's a little bit too like flat on, on the colors for my, for my, that this one is way better. So let's do that one. And yeah, it's just a matter of hitting render. Let's see how this one looks. We need to wait for this to convert, of course. And doo -doo -doo -doo. one more second for this to loathe. You can hear my computer, maybe it's going like. There we go. Look at this. Nice. So yeah, that's it. We have our nice little mosaic tile. I, I do think the the amount of height that we added is a little bit too much. You can see how some of them are like really, really pushing like up and down. Uh, but that's it. Like this is a really easy and fast way to create a mosaic um, that you can repeat on like a floor plane, on a wall, on a ceiling. And uh, you're only using one texture and you can cover as much space as you want. Now, I am going to add a little bit of something here just to, you know, bring the, the whole thing in. So um, let's add, first of all, let's add uh, some uh, depth of field. So I'm gonna select this guy, we're at 100 units away. So I'm gonna select my camera. Let's go to Arnold. Right now we're using just the perspective camera, which we should have a shotgun, but let's keep it fast. And the focus distance is gonna be 100 units and the aperture size, let's do like 0.2. And what that should do is it should blur a little bit of the, of the background right there. It seems like it's doing it fairly, fairly nice there. Let's do a little bit more. There we go, you can see how now the the background gets even more blurred. Let's go, let's go really high. Let's go for like a one aperture. So now we're gonna have like a really, really intense. You can even go higher. Like you don't need to stop on the on the number one. So we can say like two. And now it's gonna be like really blurred down there. And the, and the focus area is gonna be like up here on the front. So yeah, that, that looks a little bit better. I think two is a little bit too much, of course. Let's go back to one. Uh, of course, one thing we can do is uh, if your system allows it to use the GPU renderer, which is gonna be a little bit grainier, but a lot faster. So as you can see, it's way, way faster. Now, how do we solve the grain? We've talked about this one before. If you haven't seen the samplers video, go back and check it out because it's really, really cool. And we're gonna add this thing called the denoiser optics. Uh, we need to, I think that's set. Sometimes it tells us to uh, force the like box or something, but in this case, it's not. So yeah, just hit play. And as you can see, the more it renders, the cleaner the render gets. Uh, and I wanna add a couple of more images. So I'm gonna use a lens effect. This one's pretty cool. The lens effect, I can add a little bit of vignetting. So give a little bit more, yeah, like oomph to the whole thing. And we can even add a little bit of bloom. So let's add the bloom, let's increase the threshold or lower the threshold rather. And if we lower the threshold, more things are gonna be like effective. Let's lower this. There we go. So now we're gonna start getting this sort of like, like magical look to it, right? Let's decrease the intensity. I think like a point one should be, should be good. I think the, the vignetting is way too much. Let's do 0 0.25 or 0.5, a little more, just a little bit. There we go. Uh, we can even add like, um, like a color correct, for instance. We can increase the contrast or decrease it, the saturation, decrease it. Like you can do a lot of things here. The gamma is going to give us more light. Let's remove this one. And, and I think I want to add a, probably like an exposure. I think an exposure would be good. So exposure should give me a little bit more, more light, just a little bit there. And I also want to add like a white balance. And I want to change this to a temperature. And I want to go for like a warm color. There we go. Kind of like an afternoon sort of effect. And uh, yeah, that's it. That's a, that's, a, <laughs> that's a really nice image as you can see right there. I'm going to stop this here. Let's go, whoop, let's go to render options. And the only thing I'm gonna change is I'm gonna change the size. So I'm gonna go to um, 1080, so full HD. Let's re-render and here we go. So yeah, this is one way to do tiles, guys. As I mentioned, is just creating the texture for one little tile, one little square, and then duplicating it, instancing or it or doing whatever you need to cover a large amount of areas. And, um, and it looks quite, quite nice, especially for patterns like this, they look quite nice because 
it's it's pretty much impossible for for like a common person to to pinpoint like hey the texture is exactly the same like i can see the same exact scratches it's really really difficult now if you want me to show you a little bit of a different technique where we use like let's say four variants on this guy and then create a little bit more of um a visual interest let me know and we can we can talk about that one uh on a later video also, just a quick reminder, guys, this is the final day. Today is the final day of our promotion for our new new release, the Blender 3.0 course. So make sure to hit one of our links down here and get it before the uh, promo code goes away. And uh, yeah, start learning Blender. I've been learning Blender. I actually used this weekend to, to get my hands into some of the geometry information that Alejandro shared. And um, it's really, really, really cool. So I strongly suggest that you guys get it because having both, like Maya and Blender, it's going to make you a really, really powerful powerful artist. So that's it, guys. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you back on Wednesday. Also, final notice, final notice, a lot of news today. Uh, this weekend, this next weekend, we will have our portfolio review. We haven't had one on this month because we had a uh, few submissions on the first um, attempt on the first couple of weeks. But now the, the link has been open. I've seen some people drop their portfolios over there. So if you haven't seen it, check the description down here. That's going to be, there's going to be a link to a Google Drive. So you can drop a little note with your R station link or create a little folder with your name and, uh, and drop the images that you want me to review because this weekend we're going to go over your portfolios. So yeah, that's it guys. Hang on tight and I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.